Awesome. Okay, we're rolling. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, t- to be all fair and all honest, I never heard of of uh, this amazing woman until recently when I was hired to do a painting of her for a really cool project. And then I, I started looking into her work and stuff, and she's awesome. And I don't know that much about her, so I'm really curious. I want to know about her story and, and what's going on because she seems super rad. So everyone, please welcome the amazing... Barbie, the welder. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thanks for thanks for for doing this. This is awesome. I um like as I mentioned um it's uh it's funny because I. This this whole project that, that happened, it was su- such a cool idea, the the Rosie Reborn thing, and um, I had no idea when they first approached me, like who anybody was, and it was it was a little bit of an interesting thing because at first I think they th- what I heard from my agent was that it's this really cool project, um, you know, celebrating like strong women and different work and workforce, you know, whatever different areas of jobs and all kinds of different things. Uh, but they're really looking for a woman artist to do this, um, and but they really like your work, so um, <laughs> they're like, wear a skirt while you yeah, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, um, but um, is there a way like it, when you talk to them, like you could just let them know how much you appreciate women? And I'm like, what? This is weird. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm not gonna be a weirdo about it. Like if you like my work, you like my work. I think it's a cool project. And so I, I just – when I was on the phone with him, I'm like, hey, look, I have three daughters. I have number four on the way. I love girls. And I think this is a great opportunity to, to, to do some cool artwork that represents, like, awesome women doing cool things. So, of course, the first one they sent me was you, Barbie the Welder. And I, I immediately thought that was just a made-up name that they came up with for their campaign because it just sounds like Rosie the Riveter, like Barbie the Welder, you know. And – uh I was like, no, this this is a real – this is her real deal. And, it really is my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it was really cool. It was a really fun project uh, um, uh, to work on. It was – it was yeah, it was really – I love uh, that whole time period of, of artwork anyways, so that was just a perfect fit. But um, how did you get involved in, in this? Um, did, they, did they approach you pretty recently or was it a while ago? They approached me, I think it was approximately six months ago. And reached out and you're like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to remanufacture, redesign, re- reinvent the Rosie the Riveter jumpsuit. We are looking for modern day Rosies and we feel like you would fit the bill. Yeah. And I cannot begin to tell you how it is so in alignment with what I'm doing. I, I never thought of myself as a modern day Rosie. I'm out here welding because it's what I love to do. I'm creating art because it just feeds my soul. Sure. Uh, yeah. I have been promoting the metal fabrication industry and the skilled trades because it changed my life. And so any way I get a chance to promote the, you know, the welding industry or the skilled trades, like that's mission for me. So for these guys to approach me and be like, hey, we want to work with you to do this. I'm just like, yes, please sign me up. <laughs> that's awesome that was really cool so how long have you been welding for has it been something you've been doing since you were uh like a young kid or is it just something you recently got into or i have been welding for about 12 years i've been okay. a full-time metal sculptor for five and a half and the whole reason i got into welding to begin with was to create the art i just needed to learn to weld and fabricate in order to be able to create what i saw in my head that i wanted to create oh that's cool that's awesome so um, you said it like it changed your life. Like in what ways uh, did, did it change as far as like maybe like artistic freedom? Because I know for me it's it's a great thing to be able to make a living as an artist. But um, what you do is so uh, completely different than my line of thinking. So I I'm really don't know much about it. So that's why I'm excited to learn a little bit about this. Um, let's see. What was the question? I totally squirreled out. Oh, it's okay. Uh, well, I was just, I was just curious, like what, 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 uh, like in what ways did it change your life uh, getting gotcha. into this? Yeah. Um, 
out of high school, I was an auto mechanic. I dealt with a ton of sexism in auto mechanics. Mm. Um, just was never seen for my skills, no matter how much education I had or how hard I worked. Um, and I'll go back just a little bit further. Uh, I was bullied and picked on as a little kid, and I had low self-esteem from being a very young kid. Mm. Hated myself, hated who I was, um, and then dealt with the sexism to be a mechanic and just hated myself for being a woman because I just wanted to be a damn auto mechanic. You know, it just like that was what <laughs> my, that was what I felt my calling was. And mm. so like through all this stuff, it is like depression, 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 and just kind of went quite south. Um, went through drug, drug addiction, went through um, living on welfare, not being able to provide for my family. Um, when I found welding, I actually was suffering from depression in a miserable relationship, um, living in the projects, which is like the last place this country girl wants to live. Yeah. Um, finding welding and see, I, what, ha what had happened was I saw this woman welding these giant metal angel wings in a movie castaway starring Tom Hanks, and it literally just flipped a switch in me. I have no background in art. I have no background in welding. Um, I could work with my hands, but I just, I knew immediately that that was my mission in life was to create sculpture. And like, there's no rhyme or reason behind it. It was like being struck by lightning and mm. just like, it, it was just like, this is your calling. Um, and from that moment, uh, it just, it gave me clarity. It gave me purpose. And so I just spent the last 12 and a half years, you know, working towards that. And it was a long road to, to get there. There was a lot of stuff. But what ended up happening is I had this, I had this mission, I had this purpose, and I was driven. And what ended up happening is I started having these small wins. Like, it took me nine months to save up money to go to school for welding, which was, like, stupid because I didn't have a garage to work in. I sure as hell didn't plan on going to work for someone else. But mm -hmm. I just knew I needed to learn to weld. That was the first step. And... Uh, at the time, I was making $10,000 a year supporting a family of five on that and paying my husband's child support for his daughter because he chose not to. And so, like, there was no money. And it's, you know, like, and I was already working seven yeah. days a week and just continued to work. And it was just a huge win to be able to save up the $1,200 for school. And I got in there and started welding. It was like a huge win again. And then I got hired at a custom fab shop and another win. And so I started having these little wins. And unbeknownst to me, I didn't set out to fix depression. It's just how I felt all my life. I felt like that's just who I was, how I was, and how things were. Mm. Um, the depression actually ended up going away. Um, I started working on you know, a lot of stuff led up to that. But having that purpose and having that, that outlet, like I have this creative outlet, it's really cathartic to be in here i literally just sculpt my feelings i you know if i'm pissed you can see it in what i'm doing i just come out here and, <laughs> and throw sparks and crank up marilyn manson and just make stuff <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you know, just totally you know it just it fixes everything no matter how i feel no matter what's going on in my life i can come in my shop and it's just it's literally like being a princess in a Disneyland show. You know what I'm saying? It just, just yeah. it, it makes everything all right for me. That's awesome. Uh, that's really cool to hear that. That and and I'm so happy for you that you found that thing because, um, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that that struggle with depression and stuff like that. I I've, I've struggled with it before, or just for no reason. I just feel like garbage. Um, even though things might be okay, you know what I mean, and that's just a that's a real thing. Um, you feel guilty for feeling bad because you're like, yeah, I've got a house and I'm working for myself, and this is wonderful. Why do I feel so crappy? Yeah, and, yep. And then you've got like this. Um, it's a downward spiral of like, I have guilt for feeling guilty for feeling guilty for feeling guilty. Yeah, I mean the one thing I have a 16 year old daughter um, who has been, you know. You know, she's 16, so she's got all, all kinds of emotions and different things. And I had a talk with her recently, just you know, shared with her that hey, sometimes I just feel like garbage for no, I don't even know why, you know. And I said, you know, it's it's important to be able to talk about it and realize that that that's normal. You're not a weirdo because you feel this way. But um, when I was a kid, um, I can relate a little bit what you're saying because I had like I was obsessed my whole life with 
with drawing. Like it's just been a passion of mine since I was like, uh, I mean, I, I don't remember not doing it. It was basically all I cared about. Um, but I got picked on, I got bullied, I got beat up. I mean, one time I got, I, it's so weird to think that this happened because I can't imagine it happening in schools now, but maybe it still does. But I remember one time I got uh, in the bathroom, some guys put me in the ground and started peeing on me. And like, you know, like stuff like that. Like, and I remember going to the principal's office and they didn't do anything about it. And, um, and all, but, but the reason I'm even bringing this up is, is that all I had was that art, you know? So like I would just, res- you know, resort to burying myself into this world that I felt comfortable and I felt safe in, you know, I, I can't remember who, <laughs> I think it was Anita Kuntz, maybe. She's a really amazing illustrator that I had on. And uh, she felt – I remember telling her this story, a similar story, and she was just like, oh, no. But I told her when I was a kid, I used to fantasize about, like, like what if I was kidnapped, you know? If I was kidnapped, at least I would have, like, this superpower, this drawing ability – and maybe I could impress my my uh, captors, you know. Oh and, my gosh! And... <laughs> so two peas in a pod. Oh my gosh! It's like yeah, it's like a weird it's... thing to dream about. But it's like, you know. And my parents weren't terrible, but for some reason I was fantasizing about, you know, being kidnapped. I don't know. It's really it's 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 a weird thing, but <laughs> you weren't happy where you were, and that like it, it's like it's escape. Yeah. Like, I went and did the same thing, but I ran away because yeah. I wasn't happy. I thought, well, if I get out of here, and my parents were amazing parents. Yeah. And they did the very best they could. And I'm a wild child. And from the beginning was like this freedom, like come out of the womb, like Braveheart, yelling freedom. I just yeah. always can't explain it, but I've always just needed my freedom. This is perfect for me. But, That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Just like that, that whole imagination, like you're talking about, literally just like spent hours and hours dreaming up wild stuff that I was just like, oh, this could happen. And, you know, how, how would that be if that happened or this <laughs> would fix it? And, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you, um, are you like with, uh, with your whole process, like I'm curious about the, just the technical aspect too, is that I've, I've been looking at some of your Instagram images and some of your, you know, I, I've looked you up on Google and just saw some of the sculptures and different things. Are, do you have like a, a certain plan ahead or are you kind of just like um, – like like do you, do you do like a bunch of doodles and, and so on before and plan it out? Or do you kind of just start making things and just – it just kind of organically turns into something? Because it, it, it's – I'm just curious. Again, this is like um, – like I, my cousin is, re- is an amazing welder and his son um, actually has uh, like won all these thing- awards in Wisconsin and – uh, really crazy like they build crazy things that i'm super impressed with because i am terrible with building things i'm i ikea is like an enemy to me uh i'm really bad with building anything um but so it this is like a different kind of way of thinking for me as an artist um i've never really worked too much in 3d so it's it's kind of interesting so my creative process is i am just now learning how to draw um, bought an iPad for it, but I, at this mm. point, I have no artistic ability. There was no, there was no evidence whatsoever that me wanting to be a sculptor would be a success. No fabrication, no welding, and again, like no art. Like people, like my my um, stick figures are questionable at best. <laughs> um, I'm I'm proving it because I just I love that challenge, but I literally have just been like I I don't know. So when it comes to creating sculptures, sometimes I will look at something like I, I will look at like I use mostly scrap metal. So I'll I'll look at something and I'll be like, oh, that's a naughty. If I can make a cool little dagger out of that or <laughs> you know, whatever, and like then it shows up. Like the one behind me, um, this is half woman, half phoenix. So like the top half is a woman's body. She'll have wings, and the bottom half is a, uh, tail feathers of a phoenix. Oh, cool. Uh, so like it'll look like tail feathers. And it's just like that one came to me. I have ideas that will come to me like while I'm in a shower. Um, sometimes I'll look at something and be like, that needs to happen. I will watch movies and I'll see something in a movie that sparks something that'll, you know, where I'll just, I'll see something in a movie and I'll be like, um, I like that. Um, I'll 
like to take bits and pieces from different stuff and, and make it a thing, but um, I don't have blueprints, and usually I work from pictures. So I know hmm. I want to make her, and I know it's a woman, and so like I took a picture of my face, and then like I'm doing measurements like this, like okay, the nose is like that big, and so I'm like, yeah. but I literally have been referencing pictures of myself, I'm like, okay, my arm's that big, so I'm going to have to make the shoulders here, and um so like I usually work with pictures. It depends on what it is. Um, I just made this skull, the skull octopus uh, tool holder, and so I referenced a skull, and I just went on Google and I just looked up different pictures of skulls. And I just like I use maybe like this one looks good here, but I like the style of the mouth on that one, and so I'll just like look at yeah different stuff. But I end up working with shapes. I think at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, the nose is a triangle. Make a triangle, and it's got two little ball things on the side of it, and so make those. And so just kind of mm. you know, breaking it down into a, almost like a grid and yeah. making the shapes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's actually, like, I mean, that's a really good way to look at like any artists that do uh, drawing and painting know that that's pretty much all drawing is and painting is just shapes. You know, you're you're you know, in, in fact, like when I get lost in a painting, um, there's there, I I also teach like painting online and stuff, and I've got students there like, how do you so how do you you know you're painting the nose and how do you this and that and of course there's there's things that you want to teach about the anatomy, but really, I'm I'm really once I have the the rough drawing done, I'm really not even painting a face anymore. I'm painting shapes of color next to each other so i'm looking for those shapes and that's what i'm thinking on and when it's done it's like oh there's a face there you know it sounds kind of weird but but that that is a way yeah, that i think that, that you look at it you know you look at the overall mass big shapes and you kind of break down from bigger to smaller and that sort of a thing um now like for something like that phoenix thing you're working on is that like are these like private commissions or do you do them and then um uh, sell them somehow like how does that work Right now, 75% of what I do is commissioned, and I get paid for it before I even start, and then 25% of it, and she's one of them. This is a, just a vision that I had. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's got to happen. Um, for me, because I can't draw, I feel like I have to prove myself and say this is what I'm capable of, so I will make something, and then I'll put a price on it, and I'll be like, this is, you know, this is what I do. And then people like will see this and they're like, that's cool, but I want something X, Y, Z. And then maybe this doesn't sell for two years, but it'll show them my value. It'll show them, show them my capability. Mm, and yeah. This is what I want to be creating is this style right here. But I just so now I don't have training in art. I don't know. I just learned that this is surreal, surrealism. Oh yeah, it could be. Okay. <laughs> I mean, so, it's it's I, all a subjective, I think. <laughs> I am working on making my art very niche. Um, the stuff that makes me super happy is the one-of-a-kind stuff, which I've only been doing one-of-a-kind stuff for a long time now, a couple years, long time to me. Um, and the like, the creatures, I freaking love the creatures because there are no rules. And yeah. if I want to give her, you know, four four foot long arms versus two and a half foot long arms, I can. And so, like, I really just love that whole, there's no rules. It's like being mm -hmm. an artist, you know? Like, I, I do what I, what I want. But, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love that whole, like, the whole aspect of just, like, I love designing creatures, which I'm pretty sure that exists somewhere. But, like, just coming up with something that no one else has seen before or doing something that no one else has done. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. Do you, um, how long does it usually take to, to do a piece like that? Like the big ones, probably a pretty long time. Well, four times longer than I assume it's going to take. Yeah. It's usually a general rule. <laughs> Whatever I That's close funny. a job at, it's going to take four times as long. Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, it was. You know, it's funny about the the paintings I did for this thing. Um, that's kind of how it felt for me because, first of all, it was very strange. I don't know if they're if they're doing anything with the videos. I I um. Normally, when I work on a project, I usually work with like maybe one or two art directors. But this one, there was like several different people, and I found myself like sending in something, and then all of a sudden, I get like five different, you know, responses, and and I'm trying to make them all happy, and I'm like, wait a minute, and it was it was really cool because 
you know, a lot of times I get terrible reference to work from. But this, they sent me so many photos um, of everybody that they took. Um, so it was like um, so many different ones. Like the one I did of you, um, I liked. I liked with your hair down. I thought like I saw most of your pictures online. That's how you, I was like. That's how that's how she does her hair. So I want to make sure to capture it that way. But the one oh, reference I based off of, trademark. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was cool. And like, but I think the reference I used of your face, you had your hair in a, in buns or something. Um, and then so then I used other pictures to do that, that long hair. Oh, cool. um, but I remember just the back and forth, different sketches and everything. Um, but this took me like way longer as well because I, I was like, oh, you know, it'll probably take me a week maybe to, to paint one. And it was like, no, no, no. no. It's the same thing. It's like, man, this is taking way longer. Well, the other thing was that <laughs> is they asked me to do videos. Like, could you f video yourself working on the paintings? And, and we'll show them. Now. And I, I tried to explain to them that, oh, man, like – I can, but I kind of feel like now I'm being watched, and it's like it's hard for me to. I feel like every little thing I'm I'm doing it, you know, it's, you know what I mean. Like you just feel like, ugh. And I'd rather just get get to it. And but I so I recorded a lot of it, then I had to edit it. But the the actual paintings are huge, um, and I did them digitally, so the files were so big that my computer, like I remember when I went to send, they, they're like, we need the final art. It would it would send me. I think it took like two hours at least to send one image, wow. which normally it takes like ten minutes at the most, not even. So, so it was it was an interesting project because um, normally I don't work that large digitally. You know, maybe with oils I do, but not with digital. Um, so exciting so, to see what you create, like to know what we did here, and then to see what you created from that. I've never been happier in my whole life. No. It just was just, it was just incredible because I saw behind the scenes and they're like, oh, you're going to go out to um, Beverly Hills and you're going to do a video out there. I'm like, okay. And I'm used to like me and my cell phone and that. So I do my videos. So I assume yeah. it's two people and I get out there and it's like a 60 person production. And I'm like, this is a tad bit bigger than I expected. So I like, First of all, get your shit together, girl. Because I'm just like, I walk in. They're like, oh, we're going to walk on set. I'm like, okay. And then you're like, they weren't kidding. I'm like, Wait, this was in Beverly Hills. For Beverly some reason, Hills. I thought it was New York. So I'm in New York right now. Yeah. Where they did the pictures in my garage is in New York. But where they did all the filming was out in Beverly Hills. Oh, okay, so okay. Went out to Beverly Hills, filmed on two different locations where they interviewed us, and did another photo shoot. And that's where, I don't know if you saw the thing where, like, um, the part, uh, the one part for me is like where I like I pick up the torch a little bit and the torch is going. So like they oh, filmed that part out there and then, um, yeah, it, it was crazy. Just, I show up in, <laughs> in dirty jeans and, uh, steel toe boots. I'm like, Hey, I'm here. And it's like Beverly Hills. Apparently it's fancy out there. But yeah. yeah I, was, I was just like, Oh, don't touch the grimy girl. Oh my God. It was so much fun though. That That's so fun. cool. It was funny. Cause it, this was really strange too, because when uh, when I first started doing this, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, this sounds cool," and I and I said, "But this, I'm I'm pa I'm basically painting a product, right?" And they're like, "Yeah," I'm like, "But you have no reference of it," because at first I had no reference of the jumpsuit, and I was like, "Well, I can't paint it with unless I know what it looks like," and then so they took pic <laughs> they took pictures of Here's you, yeah, but they took the so the pictures I got of you and the pictures I got of um. Uh, I think maybe Julia was her name. Um, were you guys were both wearing different overalls uh, in the photos? There weren't the ones that that of their actual product, oh, and no so kidding. and so then the the rest of them they sent they were like in the actual overalls, and so obviously I have to paint their product. So I was I asked them if they could send me a pair of overalls. And so they sent me one, and I put my wife in the overall. So for the one of the painting of you and the painting of, of Julia, I actually posed my wife in the same positions, tried to get the lighting as best I could so it matched, and then then I tried to draw it so it fit you. And oh, you know, wow. so that was that was that was the craziest. That, those two were the hardest ones because they you know the product has to look like the product. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh. so it wasn't really the. 
you know, the the likeness or the face or anything. So, but it's a, it's a, it was interesting, you know. It was an interesting, um, and also I'm not a I'm not a graphic designer, you know. So they were sending me stuff and wanted me to do things with the text and the type, and I'm like, I ah, I just draw and paint. Like I don't know. Like um, I just felt so. It was it was a it was an interesting experiment because I, you know, um, I normally just work on the painting part of it, you know. So. <laughs> But it was so cool. And so – and it was awesome. Um, you know, I didn't really know much when I was working on it about the exact campaign and to- basically until like maybe towards the end of it. And then all of a sudden they start – they're like, um, yeah, you, you know, you should watch the, the Today Show in the morning. And that's when I, I saw all you guys on the Today Show. Um, I was like, oh, that is so crazy cool. You know, like seeing all you guys tell a little bit of your story and – um. And of course, they showed the paintings, which was cool. But um, oh, I got the best picture of me next to it. I'm generally <laughs> just. I I feel like it's part of history, whether it is or not. I'm not sure, but like it I is. <laughs> literally, feel like it's part of history. And I'll tell you something, man. Like what you did with with the drawings, like. Young kids are going to be looking at these for, you know, for generations, and they're going to be looking up to the people in those, and it's just like, that's your artwork is going that's along cool. there, man, and it's because of your artwork and that style and all the stuff that you did, it, it's just, man, it, it's, yeah, just forever just felt like, <laughs> like, holy crap, like, this is a moment in history that, you know, people will look at for generation well you guys are the cool ones i just made the image look cool you made us look cool you made us look <laughs> but how what was that experience like going on the, to the, the was it that's in new york right the today show that is uh what york. was what was that like was it um it was amazing was it was it cool <laughs> um, it seemed those kind I of things always seem awkward to me though but you know um, the... <laughs> it was a very amazing experience i'm I've been interviewed a couple of times at home by um, Hometown TV. Uh, I've been streaming and li- I've been live streamed on YouTube. I've been, I've got over, I think, 112 videos on YouTube that I've made. I've been on TV a couple of times. I've been in magazines a couple of times. It's just, I've gotten used to it. Just mm-hmm. through practice. I was awkward as shit when I started out, like on camera, like so awkward, so awkward. My friends are out there like, <laughs> laughing at me all the time. They're just like, Barbie, just be you. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> well, it but is I, weird, I, you know. I live in the moment kind of person. I was like, aren't you nervous? Like, no. I am, I know I'll crush it. I know that I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm you know, involved in. It's very easy to talk about it. I'm passionate about it. I'm like, I'll go up there and crush it. Right now, I'm right here. I'm thinking about being right here. And I'm not thinking about like a bunch of cameras and Al Roker and you know all the people that are there. So it's just always to stay in the moment, and so it keeps me it, that. And if I feel like you know, like you, you feel nervous or you feel excited, I name my energy. Does it make sense? I name it. Um, if I'm nervous, I'm just I'll tell myself I'm excited about it. Because that way it changes, like, literally, it's the same energy. And yeah, that's a good idea. No, I'm not nervous. Like, are you nervous? Like, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really that's smart. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you're scared about so Like, it's just figuring out a way to reframe it because you literally, like, you're an artist. You create your pictures. You create your life. And I'm sure you've seen this. Like, you've literally painted your career to exactly where you want it to be today. You know, or... or Trying to. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, that's really smart. I really that's a that's a really good way to put it. Um, cause I've I've definitely been there where I'm like I've I've been in situations like that where I'm like super nervous. And but it, you're right, it's just I'm all it's just if you switch it to like I'm excited. You know, I, I recently like started I actually kind of um have been doing doing that the same thing because I in the last um few months, well since September I've started doing stand up comedy. And I, Ooh. and I like, you know, this is I'm super nervous, but like, I have had that same thing in, in my mind thinking, no, I'm excited. I'm really excited. So when I get up there, instead of being nervous, I'm just like, ah, so excited to be on stage and get to do my jokes and, and whatever else. Uh, that's a really good way to think of it. I, I like that. That's Ask awesome. yourself, what kind of energy do you want to bring to <clears throat> the people that you're going to? Do you want to 
give them nervous energy because you're literally this is my belief you live really, we, we literally are just made up of energy and so if yeah. you're feeling nervous you're literally like you think about a dog and you go up to a dog and you're nervous he's gonna bite you the dog senses it it's no different than anyone else that you're with anywhere you've met people who when you've met them you're just like dude i want to be their friend they just have like this je ne sais quoi they like, have, they have yeah. this hit factor that you're just like yo we need the party like yeah, yeah. Right there. I, need, I need to hang out I love with her. That. she looks so much fun like and so like we put off this energy and so if you're nervous you're putting off nervous energy and you're literally just vibrating that to the universe and the universe is just like ah. but if you <laughs> are just like what kind of energy? Like, what kind of energy do I want to bring to this interview? So before I talk to you, like, I literally am just like, I want to be genuine. I want to be funny. I want to be happy. I want to be sincere. Like, but I, you know, I just at the end of the day, I just want to be me. And yeah. so, like, I'm just like, I want positive vibes. And so I just kind of like spend a minute and literally just kind of feel like I can think about a time in my career or in my life when I was just like, just can nail that. And I'm just like, oh, it feels so good. Oh, I love this. And literally can just picture it. You're an artist, you're visual. Like just picture like moment in your life when you absolutely crushed it or when something really good happened or when something just was like, this is just perfect. And just think about it. And then you can bring that energy into where you're at. Yeah. Out to the crowd. <laughs> no, I think that's so good. I'm actually going tonight. So I'm going to think about that before I go up tonight. Because I'm actually trying out brand new uh, four minutes of material that I've never done before. Um, so I am a little bit nervous. No, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes! I'm excited oh, to try it. <laughs> so have you gone up on stage and absolutely freaking crushed it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So before times. you go on stage, <laughs> when you like, you got like two or three minutes before you've got to go on, just sit back there, close your eyes, and just imagine – that moment where you're up there, people are laughing, people are engaged, people are like, this is awesome, this is funny, and like the, the um, clapping at the end, just totally feel that. And I <laughs> guarantee you, if you feel that, like you genuinely just like totally embrace that, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna absolutely crush it the same way. I'm gonna, I'll do it tonight. <laughs> I wanna hear back, I wanna hear what happens. Yeah, I'll let you know. Um, so speaking of, what kind of things do you like to do for fun besides uh, the welding and stuff? Like, what what what's your uh, extra that activity? Welding that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> like <Really>? nothing. <laughs> um, I love to drive, and I love to fish, and I love. Oh, to be me in the too. Woods. I love to be in the woods. Um, oh, that's awesome. Do you do you hunt and stuff too? Uh, yes and no. So I was bow hunting and gun hunting deer and turkey and I'm really good at waterfowl. Um, That's awesome. Hurtful, oh, I love it. Death rabies! And uh, <laughs> when I went full time as an artist, all my money, all my energy went into art. Five and a half years. Um, I ended up selling a lot of my hunting gear. I sold my climber stand, my rifle, my shotgun, my bow. Um, and a little bit of camo, but I sold everything else just because I wasn't <laughs> able to afford to be an artist. Um, I actually just took my, and I haven't been shooting anything. I just, I've been away from that. Um, I sold both of my boats. I sold my motorcycle. Um, I'm in the process of buying a new motorcycle. It's been like four years. I miss it. <laughs> um, I have been fishing three times in like the last six months twice in january for my birthday so i'm starting to get so back into do you want ice fishing uh no too cold i'm a whip uh -uh. i like being no it's, you said you went fishing in january so i was like wondering oh, sorry. like i was in florida for my birthday oh okay 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 yeah, it's like so you did ocean fishing like fancy cocktails with fish and poles <laughs> see that my i grew up in i, I live in chicago um, I've been here since 96, so I've been here most of my life, so I feel like I'm from Chicago, but I grew up in North Wisconsin, oh. and so I grew up hunting, uh, like, you know, whitetail and fishing, like, nonstop. That's, like, all, that's all we did was hunt and fish, and um, my brother and my dad, that's basically all they do still, so... I only get to go fishing basically every time I every summer basically I go up to my brother's he's got a pontoon boat 
and we go up there um, and we just spend a whole day out there. So much fun, just catching as many fish as possible. You know, it's the best. I love it. I, I just, I wish I could, only, I could do it way more. Um, in Chicago, I guess I could fish, but it's 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 not the same. It's not the same as going up like on a smaller lake and you know, be able to just have have some wine and you know catch as many bluegills as you want. And it's so oh, much more fun. So oh yeah, perch, I love it. Perch and bluegill. Oh, oh I feel like perch is probably has been my favorite ever. I love it's one of the most tasty fish. Yeah, I love panfish. Give me some Uncle Bucks from <laughs> from Bass Pro Shop. Give me the mild mm-hmm. Uncle Bucks. And give me a you know, like twelve rack of beer. I'll like, go out and sit and fish all day long. And that, is the, that is so much oh, fun. Man. I, yeah, that's awesome. I miss it. Sold both the boats, so I haven't been out as much. But I am uh, I am working on building the foundation of this so strong that if I want to take a month off and go fishing, I can. That's, that's awesome. I, I got a buddy here in Chicago who is um, a, one of the best tattoo artists in the city, and he's just amazing. He started his own shop a few years back, and um, so it's just him and one other guy, I think, at working it. And, and he's gotten to the point where it's he's got, like, a waiting list for, like, a year or so, and he doesn't do, like, um, small tattoos. He only does, like, full-on, like, sleeves or back pieces, like, huge pieces. Um, and you know, so you have to go in for multiple sessions and that sort of thing, but his whole life is fishing and I love it. Basically he just tattoos as much as he can. And then he's just like planning and tattooing to that fishing trip and he'll go like to Ireland for a month or, you know, Alaska or he'll just, he'll just go some crazy place and just fish and, I, I just like love to live vicariously through that. Like his little stories and it's like, oh, oh that's on jealous. my list. Like traveling outside of the country with my art. But like I never, I literally never thought about fishing in another country until yeah. right now. And that was totally on my list. Cause like, that's where outside of my, like, this is, this is just peace. This is peace for me. This is where, this is my happy place. And fishing is my other one, and I need to bring yeah. that into it where I'm I'm doing more of that. Like to be able to fish on my birthday was like the best gift I've ever given myself. Besides choosing to go all in on you know all <laughs> in on art. That's awesome. So I I miss it, and I need to get to where I can fish more often. And yeah, just I have to schedule it. But if you're doing single, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's. I think he's. Uh, I think he's. Uh... Last thing I need, don't expect. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think he is. I have no idea. Actually, I haven't seen him for. I th- you know, it's a bummer. I actually had him on my podcast about a year or so ago, and uh, he told me that he was thinking about moving to Colorado, uh, and so I'm not sure yet. But he's one of those guys that we we've known each other for years, and we just talk every once in a while. But um, I pr- I pretty much don't leave my studio much either, so I'm kind of <laughs> one of those. Where I am right now. Yeah. Yeah. From here, which I can't cook anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So you said uh, that uh, you have kids as well. Do they? Boys. And how are, are they into uh, the welding stuff as well? Or not uh, really? My younger boy, when he was five, I taught him to TIG weld and taught him the art side of it after a couple of years, and he did really well. Um, after a while, he got out of welding, got into blade smithing, did that for a year, a Damascus knife. Got out of the bladesmithing, went into cooking, and has been into cooking and gaming ever since. And so I just... Oh, <laughs> so that's he's, awesome. He's gone through some stuff. My older boy, I've had him weld with me on one small project, but he's just like, it's not their thing. But when yeah. I die, this dies. <laughs> so morbid. <laughs> uh, it's, well, I, I totally understand. I totally understand. Like I, People always no. assume that my kids are... Are they, are they all like artists and stuff? And... and uh, no, I mean they are in, in in their own ways though. Like, like you know, they all like my uh, my oldest loves to draw, but she's not like a passion. But she's she's pretty good at it. And my thirteen year old, um, she's all about reading and writing. Like she wants to be a writer, and she just sits there and just writes and writes and writes. And I'm like, go for it, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. Like I I kind of I'm I'm kind of a firm believer of, um not pushing anything on your kids at all like even down to like 
you know, religion, anything. Like nothing gets pushed on them. Like you know what I mean? Like like I don't I don't believe in uh, you know Christian kids or Muslim kids or or atheist kids or anything like that. Like just let them be a kid. When they get older, if they figure it out and they want to go some, you know, that let them do whatever they want. And same thing with art and stuff. And I'm not really a big sports person. Um, and I've always thought though, like one of my daughters was just all of a sudden like, I want to be a soccer player. I mean, I'd be at every game, you know, but, uh, so far that hasn't happened. They're all, I mean, I have a, I have a 16 year old who's almost 17, 13 year old, a two year old. Um, and then the fourth one is coming in uh, July. So who knows what they're going to, you know, (laughs) it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting. They're all so different, you know, but, um, but yeah, that's so cool. It's so interesting that to see the different wide, you know. I love that you're you're also into hunting and fishing. That's so cool. That's that's rare for me to hear because again, like I'm I've been living in Chicago since 96. People still will make fun of me for being from Wisconsin, which I don't understand because the only thing Illinois has going for it is Chicago. The rest of it is just a big farm field. Wisconsin is a gorgeous state. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like beautiful up there. There's like m- there's like bears and cougars and wolves and elk and moose coming in there now. And there's just so much awesome wildlife and fishing and everybody's nice. You know, people are friendly. Um, and they're always making fun of me for being from Wisconsin. But uh, Wisconsin's gorgeous. I love it. And I but I never hear anybody talking about hunting or fishing ever. And uh, people always make fun of me for that. I'm like, I haven't been hunting since I was like. 13 or 14 maybe i don't know it's been a long time um but i love it you know still like it's i i feel like i get the best parts because when i visit my brother he'll like he goes elk hunting every year and um and he usually gets one every year like huge like it's insane how much meat but when i go up there he's always got like a freezer full of like you know all kinds of goodies you know and i'm like yeah you keep doing that (laughs) i support this because it's so <laughs> so delicious, man. I say, yeah. I, I miss it. It is the best food. Oh ever. yeah. I like duck. I love duck, man. Just love it. Breast it out like chicken and throw it on the grill, man. It's just so good. I miss that. I miss the fresh fish. Mm. And like, like I said, it was just like a lot of the pan fish, like bass. I catch and release. It's more just like um, how big of a fish can I get with that one? Yeah, the, uh, the panfish are just freaking delicious, and I, I miss oh. it. It's like candy, Absolutely. almost, like panfish. It's it's so delicious. Um, I had uh, it was a couple years ago. I was very surprised by it. Excuse me. Um, I can't remember if my brother gave it to me or somebody, but I had um bear, um bear jerky, and I was I couldn't believe how good that was. It was just so like. Amazing, and it was really we- a very weird coincidence because I think like on the way home from that trip, I was listening to an episode of Joe Rogan talking with a hunting buddy of his, and they were talking about eating bear meat and how because of the berries and, and everything that they eat, there it it it's almost like a candy. It's like very like um like a sweet like a, there's like something about the meat that's just different. And I was like, that's right. it's it was really delicious, and I was just shocked. People are weirded out by it. like you ate bear. You know, but it's like, that's yeah, so it's not... weird. I was like, I don't know why people would be weird at all. I feel like that's more, well, <laughs> this is a lot rural, ruraler. That's a word, more rural. It's more yeah, rural it depends here. where you live. Cause people in Chicago here don't get it. Most most people don't. Maybe that's um, a funny restaurant to open up there. Yeah. It would be like, you know, <clears throat> blowing people's minds to have uh, just the only animals that they've hunted is, uh, like the, the restaurant. Yeah, it's strange. It I think it's funny how hunting is becoming – sometimes, it depends on where you're hanging out, but can it just becomes such a, like, taboo topic, you know? It's like – this is weird for me because I grew up with it my like my whole life. And so, um, like, my brother, he, he's, like, a very big defender of it, obviously. And it's, it's interesting. Like, when he shoots an elk, that thing – feeds their family for two years one elk you know it's pretty awesome so I, i'm That's pretty incredible. much incredible yeah if people were 
knowledgeable about how their food hits their plate. Yeah. Um, like the farms and stuff. And I'm all about the farmers. I'm all yeah. about, you know. But if they, you know, like, hey, how are your chicken nuggets made? Go watch a video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> You'll never be like Donald's again. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it, but it, like, the difference, another thing is, like, you look at people that eat mainly, like, food that they've hunted, they're healthier. You know, you, mm-hmm. you have to exercise to go out and get them. It's the patience. So, like, there's, I feel like there's a purity in the woods. It's for me anyway, like, sitting in a tree and waiting for, now, I've never gotten a deer, but I love the act of going out there and trying. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like, purity of sitting in the woods. I feel like there's just such a cleansing thing about sitting in nature and watching the sun come up and feeling oh, the, sure. tree, the tree behind it, like, the trees moving in the wind. And it's just like, ah, it's just, it's amazing. Oh, I love it. The food is natural. There's no, you know, there's no pesticides. There's no bullshit. It's just natural. And so you're getting the the best that Mother Nature has to offer. You know, it's it's funny that it's taboo to some people. And yeah, (laughs) yeah. If I I post a picture with me with a gun, some people kind of lose their minds. And it's just like, yeah. You know how good it feels to go out and be like, hey, I got this duck or I got these ducks and I'm now feeding my family. Like, it's like being an artist. Every penny that comes into that house, you brought it in there. Mm-hmm. This, you know what I'm saying? These. There's yep. no, you know, I can go get a job and sit on my ass and collect a paycheck and just barely, you know, not even do my full job. Not that I would ever do that, but oh my gosh. Like, just barely <laughs> do enough to get paid. And I had a paycheck coming in, whether I put in 100% of effort or 70% of effort. As an artist, it's, you know, what you get is what you get. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's the best thing ever. That's that's you know, I feel very very grateful. But um, I I've been that's a good thing, a good question about what you're doing because you um, oops sorry my phone is vibrating. Um, so I I I've been doing freelance. Um, let's see. Since, well, it's almost I've almost it's almost been twenty years. It's kind of crazy. Um, awesome. And um, so that's all I've been making a living is doing my art and and it has its ups and downs, you know, like there's times where I paint covers for Time magazine and it's awesome and I get a lot of respect and I doors open and and cool things happen. And then all of a sudden it'll be nothing for a while. You know what I mean? And you're just like, oh, remember me? (laughs) (laughs) I painted that cover that you all liked. You know what's going on? (laughs) Yeah. Um, and so, the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello, my sunshine girl. But there's, but there's like, but there's times where it's just like, you know, what's happening? Like, am I, do I have to, like, there's been times where I'm like, ask my wife, I'm like, gosh, do I have to go get a job at Home Depot or something? Like, what's going on? This is crazy. And then all of a sudden, a, a, a good job will come in. I'm like, oh, phew. you know, and then, you know, and then another one. And sometimes it gets so crazy that I'm, I, I'm too busy. You know, so how do, does that kind of work with you with your welding where it's just like when it rains, it shines, kind of just here's a ton of stuff and then nothing? And um, Gosh, good question. Today with my business, it's a lot more consistent. Um, I have – I constantly am working on passive income through my art, which means I do the work once and I get paid again and again. Like my YouTube channel, I've got that monetized, and so I make videos. They might only be like two to five dollars a video, but I get paid for them. I put the video up once, and I'll get paid for you know eternity on it. Same thing with writing a book. Um, what was the other one I'm doing? Um, I'm I'm working on. I've created a product line of metal art welding kits, and those eventually. Right now, it's all hands on, but eventually, that is going to be where it's going to be passive income. Um, That's awesome. For me, the passive income allows me to do whatever the frick I want. And so I don't have to work this whole month, and I'm still getting paid. All my bills are covered. Um, I choose to work every damn day because it makes me really happy. Yeah. But as far as the work coming in, um, I got a big job in December. And then uh, I have not gotten a big job since then. I finished one in November, got another one in December, did it in January, um, and really, like, but I'm still getting paid, I'm still, so I'm, like, 
what what I work on, like, it, you know, that's when this comes in. Like, so I started mm-hmm. her months ago, and I don't remember the exact date. But um, if I don't have a commission, like, yay, this is my priority now. And so yeah. I've got a month and a half scheduled for this. And even with commissions coming in, I'm just like, yeah, I won't be able to start until August. So if you're okay with that, then that's what we'll go with. But that's awesome. That will give me something to sell. It'll give me something to photograph. It'll give me something to promote myself with. So what I end up doing is, like, if stuff's not coming in, I'm just like, I'm constantly working on my marketing and on self-improvement, on branding. How can I stay relevant? How can I um, elevate myself? How can I be seen as an expert in my field? Um, how can I help others? How can I give back? How can I, so I'm, I'm constantly working on something. So if it's not, yeah. if I'm not working in my business, I'm working on my business. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, have you ever heard of gumroad.com? Gumroad, have you heard of that? No. It's uh, gum, like G-U-M, road, R-O-A-D. Gross. Yeah, gumroad.com. Uh, you should check it out uh, because it's a really easy uh, place to to like you know do little videos um, and sell them to the public. It's a really cool site. Um, it's it they do it in a way it's super easy to set it up, um, and you you can tell all your fans and people that follow you wherever you are now, um, like hey I got a new video at Gumroad, and you can do anything from like you know you could you could do a video that's an hour long or thirty minutes long or whatever sell it for whatever you want. Um, and it's just a really cool way to like eat, make some, you know, like I'm planning on doing um, a couple small oil um, studies and just I got myself a GoPro camera now and I'm going to start just like filming the process and put them up there and offer like, you know, and I'm, and I'm actually thinking of doing it more like, you know, hanging out with Siler where it's not necessarily me teaching. It's more like hanging out and talking, but you get to watch me paint like kind of like you're just chilling in my studio or something. Um, so anyway, you might want to look into it. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, I know the guy that started it, I uh, met him at a, at a event here in Chicago and he's just, he, it's a, it's an awesome, the way that he runs, it's really, really smooth. So, and they also like show you like how well things are being received and like, like you get charts and, uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, uh, I want to show you, you know, it's funny. I have uh, one thing I wanted to say real quick about your hand tattoo before I move on. It's funny when I was working on the painting, there was a, an issue with your hand tattoo at first. Like if I was going to paint it and they're like, oh, we don't know if, if it's okay to, to, or not to paint the hand tattoo. And I was just like, what? What are you talking about? That's part of her. That's who she is. That's on her skin. And I couldn't understand it because I'm covered in tattoos. I got hand tattoos. I, I, I have everywhere tattoos. And I was just thinking like if someone was doing a painting of me and the, 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 the tattoos weren't there, I'd be really annoyed. Like I see pictures of myself in the past without my tattoos and I look really weird. Like <laughs> I'm not, it just doesn't make sense anymore. It's just yeah. become so much part of me that it's like, and so I remember like just talking with him. I'm like, I've never heard of this in my life as an illustrator ever where, and they're, they're, they could probably, they probably were right. Cause they work in advertising. I have no idea, but they're like, no, we got to get the permission of the tattoo artist who did that tattoo. Yeah. I'm like, what? I I've never heard of that. Still there that did the hand tattoo. The yeah. sleeve is my art is my current artist, and we just finished that uh, a few months ago. Yeah. So he's just like, hell yeah, I'll give you permission. I'm like, I'll make you famous. <laughs> I just never even heard. I mean, of course, I would want. Yeah, I mean, of course, I would want to give the credit. Artist. You know, you want to give the credit to the artist, of course, yeah. but. You know, I just thought from the perspective of an artist doing a a portrait of a, of a human. Who happens to have tattoos on them? That's it's like really, you know. I don't know. I just, I guess they're I never not, crossed they're that. They're not selling it though, so they're yeah. They're using that as advertising. They're that's true. Pay for that eventually, and so I can see that. They're worried that you know but I'm gonna sue you. you. Just pay me for me, like we don't need to have permission for anything. I don't even think even if we were like making a poster and selling it. Yeah, yeah. I think for that one. But, and people are just like totally like dying to get these posters that you that you painted. I I reached out to them guys. I'm like, hey, can we like can we sell the posters? Like, what can we do? And I like, would like to get copies of that. <laughs> I know, right? I, I should write them. 
I, what I'm saying is like, well, you know, like people are looking for the posters. I've got people that'll put them up in their shop. I have people that'll put them up in their welding supply store. Like they, I'm like, and their advertisements will go right with it. And they're just like, I'm just like, just let me know as soon as possible. I've had people riding my ass since that picture. Yeah. Came out. So that's awesome. Happily. happily. Worst, worst case scenario, I'll have them printed up and I'll just give them away to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'll pay for it. Well, I, that, that's awesome. I have people that are just like super supportive and everything I do, like they want to be a part of it. And like that, they're just like losing their minds over it. I'm like, I want one for my shop. I want a banner. <laughs> that's awesome i never even thought of that i don't know why i should ask them if i could have a couple just because just to keep for like history sake like you said like yeah. it's pretty cool I, I still get a kick out of it like i just did a cover for time um a week ago and what i'm really excited about is i don't know if, if you saw the post i did uh but i did a post of uh, the woman in a wheelchair it was a cover yes. for time yeah. so the cool thing about it is time is doing like a special thing for for women's month appreciate women's appreciation month and they're doing a hundred covers of women that they believe should have been on the cover for woman of the year or person of the year or whatever like that. Oh, awesome. So it's really cool. Um, so there's, I think it's from the twenties to the, to now is how they, they, they separated all the, the decades. And, um, but what I'm super stoked about was that they chose 16 out of all of them to actually be printed as real covers. And they and they chose mine, so I'm super stoked. So I like these kind of yes. things. I I still get excited. Like I can't wait to see it in print. You know what I mean? Like it never gets old. So I definitely gotta get copies of the, of these posters. I mean, yeah, it, definitely. Just yeah, to like, I think that's amazing. I I've like got a collection of like newspaper articles, and every time I've been in print for one way reason or another, like I've got I've got a shelf where I've got stuff in it, but. <laughs> yeah, I got. Um, yeah, it's, it's I was awesome. on stage at Full Throttle Saloon during a Jackal concert, and I was showcasing one of my. Uh, I, I made a sculpture for Harley Davidson, and oh, got that's awesome! Them live on stage, and there is a picture of me that someone took from the crowd. I've got like a full full bottle of whiskey, and you know, like it's just like <laughs> one of my. I know my mom hates my guts. It's like one of my crowning <laughs> moments as an artist, like. I, uh, I not I, I've had so many incredible moments as an artist, um, the Today Show being just one of them. But that moment on the stage, and it's just like you can see the pride. You can see like it, it was just a moment of just like, dude. I believed in myself 12 years ago. I had no right to believe in myself. I had no right to go all in on myself. And that moment right there was just like. Yeah, bitch, you did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that was just like, yes. And like, I had a poster made. And I took the picture and I had it blown up on Vista Print and had it made into a poster. <laughs> and it's in my room. And it's like, I think it's awesome. It's, it's a screensaver. Like, that's a moment when I'm ready to step out on stage or go talk yeah. to somebody or go something like this. Like, that's a moment that I pull from. Uh, it's just something that is just like, it's pure, it's pure success, man. And it's 100% me. Like, yes, I've had people that supported me, but I had to believe in myself first. And I had to become somebody that was capable of making a sculpture of Harley Davidson to have that moment. And like that, like you with the Time Magazine, and just like, you know, taking your picture and like, you know, you sell. You know, <laughs> you know, I am I am still a dork about it. Like, I, oh, I still like to go to the store and see it on the shelf and be like, like, yeah. what I did? like you know, but to be honest, I hope that never gets old because... Like I, I don't take it for granted. I'm, I, I'm very, you know. I think it's, Agreed. I think it's, um, and like you said, like what, you know, you said, uh, you know, you didn't, de you know, you didn't deserve this or you didn't think that, and like I, I think you did. Like I think everybody has, you know, I, I think one thing that that I've thought about a lot is the whole left brain, right brain thing, where you know, like the right brain is the creative side. The left brain is the analytical. So I always think about like in, every time I'm, I'm in the middle of a painting, every time there comes to a point in the painting where the left brain is like talking to me 
where I'm like, ah, oh, no, that looks stupid. You think that's cool? That's not cool. That's cheesy. That's corny. That's not like, like, what are you doing? Like, nobody's going to like that. They're going to think that's stupid. You should erase. You should start over, scrap that. And there's the other part of me going like, no, I think this is cool. I'm going to push it. I'm going to take it to this level and see what happens. And I'm, I constantly have these arguments and I can tell there's that, that one side of me that's like, you know, it's like, why don't you just shut the fuck up and go do math or something? I'm trying to do a painting. <laughs> like, leave me alone, you know? And that's funny because I can't do math, so that part of me is in denial, anyways. Um, but it's oh, like you make it so awesome on stage tonight. <laughs> uh, you make my heart happy. That's funny. <laughs> but that, but I think that's the thing is like we all have to in, in order to be successful, we have to you know push past even ourselves, you know uh, the, that part of ourselves that's like that's like. Nah, you're not really worth it. And it's like, no, 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 we are. You are. Like, we are. Can you put 10 grand on that? Like, really? That's like 10 hours of work. Is that right to do that? Like, yeah, that right yeah. there, the, the valuing of yourself. I yeah. think it's, I know, like, that has been my hardest struggle is putting a value on what I do and saying, mm-hmm. that's scrap metal. That's like two cents in scrap metal. Like, how dare you put 500 bucks on that? Yeah. Uh, and then be like, no one will ever spend that much money on what you're doing. That's not good enough to yeah. ask $500 <laughs> for. That's not, you know, and like that, that, that is a constant, this like, um, this sculpture here, um, uh, one of my, my favorite conversation I've ever had. Um, I grew up with a welfare mentality, even though my dad worked his ass off two different jobs to make sure that we had, and uh, like, we had, my mom was super frugal. We can't afford that. That you know, shopping at Salvation Army. I literally have like this welfare mentality that I grew up with. And you squeeze every little tiny drop. Yeah. Of the food <laughs> thing, you stick all the little pieces of soap together to get a bar of soap again. Um, and so I struggled financially most of my life because I didn't feel like I deserved stuff. I didn't feel like you know, like it was, I was worth it. And then moving into being an artist. Um, I way undersold myself for my entire career. Um, you're welcome to everybody that got really cheap stuff from me. Um, <laughs> no more. So, yeah. Today I'm a very expensive artist, and this is why. It's because I'm learning my value. It's still something I'm working on, but um, this scope here, when it's done, um, I, I was approached by someone at a, a self-help course. It was so amazing. Sat down to dinner, had dinner with these four people I'd never met, three people, me and three people I'd never met before. They're just like, hey, we're going to dinner, want to go? I'm like, cool, yeah. So the guy sitting across me goes, hey, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, I'm a sculptor. And he goes, how much is your most expensive sculpture? And at the time, it was the Angel on the Swing. Uh, $12,500 is what I put on her. Um, ridiculous, because I'd never sold anything anywhere close to that much money. Yeah. But... I really don't want to sell her. She's my favorite, like my favorite. And so I'm just like, I'll put this ridiculous price on it and no one will buy it and I'll get to keep her. Yay. And so (laughs) when he asked me, like I apologetically was like, oh, 12,500. And he's just like, I mean, like I felt guilty for saying it. Yeah. Felt that. Um, He says, well, how much is sculpture selling for? And I go, I don't know. I've never looked it up. Uh, Like no (laughs) shit. Never looked it up. (laughs) <laughs> um, so he gets out his phone and Googles it, and he's like, anywhere from 500 to 4.7, 7.4 million dollars, I think, was the most expensive sculpture. 7.4 million. Um, and I'm like, really? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I didn't feel so yeah. bad about my 12.5. Yeah. So he's like, I am going to challenge you to make seven sculptures in the next year, uh, ranging from 100,000 up to, I think he said four point, like half, the halfway part. Um, yeah. I think it was like, you know, something million dollars. And I just like, you know, my whole like anxiety is just like, you, <laughs> you know, you can't do that. That's ridiculous. But like out of my mouth comes the words, okay. Um, I literally could feel <laughs> like my chest is just like, what are you thinking? Yeah. Um, but I saw the truth of what he was saying. And so I'm just like, I know damn well, like I'm a person of integrity and if I say that a sculpture is going to be half a million dollars, then I will put at least that much value into it. I'll make the sculpture so much more valuable than what people are paying for because that's who I am as a human. Yeah, exactly. And that's so awesome. Four and a half 
or four, let's see, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars is what I'm going to put on her when I'm done. And yeah, it's about ten bucks in scrap metal right there. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, trust me. That's pushing myself, pushing myself so far out of my comfort zone. But I know damn well, like when that's done, there'll be more than uh, you know, more value in that than than what I'll ever charge for somebody. But that's like expanding myself, getting out of that comfort zone. And really starting to own my value, like mm-hmm. there'll never be another thing like this on Earth. Like no matter how many people try, there'll never be another one just like this. And same with my other stuff. And so like seeing my value and and really and this will help me like price other stuff. I get an idea of how long this takes and what it's gonna be. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, but like this will be like the most amazing thing that I've ever created in my life, except for my kids. You know what I'm saying? Like so. Yeah next level stuff. <laughs> no i think that's great yeah I, that's totally i totally relate with that i do something very similar where so most of my editorial illustration work that i do uh is digital painting and some people get confused by that um but uh i'm a traditional artist first and foremost like i you know of a watercolor artist an oil painter and um and uh oh yeah we're gonna be down real soon and um, and basically, um, but for editorial and illustration type work, I years ago started teaching myself how to paint digitally because the deadlines are just ridiculous. Like, you know, like that time piece I did last week, I, I think I had, I think I had two days to do it. So what? it's, yeah, it was like basically they actually gave me a little bit more time, but I had a different deadline. So I only had two days that I could actually do it. Um, and so. You know, the, the digital painting is basically the same. I, I work in the same kind of techniques. I do underpaintings. I draw everything by hand. Um, and then I, you know, I've made a lot of my own brushes. I've bought brushes from different artists. And and I, I work very traditionally, even though it's it's digital. And it still takes like hours and hours and hours to do a painting and everything else. So, but the difference is, is when you, when I'm working editorial, that kind of stuff, there's so many changes. There's so many art directors. There's so much that goes into it. Where I, I, I have nothing but respect for those artists out there doing what I do that are still doing it traditionally. I don't understand because, you know, editorial and stuff doesn't pay what they should. I don't think, um, for the kind of work that we're doing. And if I was doing it traditionally, I'd just be pulling my hair out. I'd be losing my mind. Um, so, in the same way, like I do, like whenever I do oil commissions, um, I don't, I, I don't do an oil painting unless I'm getting a certain amount for it. Uh, you can't have an original painting by me unless you're going to pay this amount. And it, what's funny is I have I run into the same thing where I used to feel kind of bad about the price, but then I'm thinking I've gotten almost that much or half that amount for a digital painting before. So the traditional has to be way more. And I only, I'm only doing like a handful of those a year in comparison, so they have to be worth more because there's not as many of them. And oh, uh, yes. But I definitely understand that like that feeling of, like how do you charge for this and stuff and and I, I've learned that you just have to you have to you know believe in yourself and know what you're doing and is is it's worth that much and the quality you know otherwise they don't get it you don't get to have it. You know what helped me? <laughs> with the, the, my auto mechanic actually helped me because here I am I'm sitting here and I, I bought all this equipment I've you know I've gained the skills I've you know put myself in a position where I can do it. And I'm, I'm charging like 20 bucks an hour because when I left my job, I was making like 17 and change. And I go into my home mechanic one day to have him do some work and it says 80, 87 bucks an hour. I'm thinking, what the fuck is this dude getting? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's fixing my alternator. I'm making one of a kind, which at the time I was mass producing stuff. But I'm just like, every now and then it would be one of a kind. But I was just like, how is he making? And so like, I started to think like, how the hell can I start earning 80 something an hour? Because yeah. damn, like I'm a specialist, and the only difference between then and now is I just made the decision. I'm like, you know what? I'm billing out at this much an hour. You like it or you don't, which I wasn't in the position because I took every damn job that would come yeah. through, and I was just like, like I would guiltily be like, you know, I, I learned what I learned is this: what's your budget for this project? That right there, ho 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 ho. Yep. Because their budget was a lot more than what I was going to charge, and so I had a couple of windfalls. I was gonna charge this guy three fifty for a sign, and they go, oh, "What's your budget for this project?" And he goes, uh, 850 and I'm like, "Okay, 
Normally. <laughs> normally I would, but I got breaking my schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's the that's the, that's the way you got to do it, man. I, th- I think that's great. Um, I know you got to get going soon. I have uh, so normally, so I have I have fans out there do drawings, and so um, this week was a little bit strange because it was kind of a we only had a few days, and I got a lot of messages from people saying, um, like I get a lot of uh, drawings from all over the world, which is really cool, um, and uh, but I got a lot of messages saying I don't I. I don't know if I could do it this week. And, and then like, I saw your, your painting of her and I don't know, man, you know, and I thought oh, it was so funny. Cause that's never don't happened never before. Judge against someone else. Isn't that funny? Don't <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, that's, but anyways, I have one drawing to show you that I think is really cool. And it is by um, a friend of mine from um, Austria and his name is uh, Dominic Zeilinger. And he always does really cool stuff. Like his, he, he almost like kind of experiments every week is like that or not every week, but he has done a lot for my podcast, but he always does like a completely different type of a, um, approach. He like, tr- likes to challenge himself. So I love it. So anyways, I'm going to try to share the screen with you. So you can, let me know if you see this and, uh, let's see, hopefully this, let me know if you see this when I flip it. <laughs> <See that? laughs> They're oh, good. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Dude, it's like Isn't that funny? cat tails for my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's freaking brilliant. Yeah, it's really cool, and and the, the, the it's funny because the pigtails, in a way, almost remind me of the denim too from the the project. Like there's some kind that. of. All I can see is a Cheshire cat with that man. The yeah. smile. The smile. Oh yeah. Listen, I have a giant Cheshire cat fan, and I have the Cheshire cat tattooed on my belly, but you're not. <laughs> that's hilarious oh man that's so cool yeah, that is fantastic so yeah dominic's awesome uh i i i love what um he always does something like like kind of clever and humorous in there uh that's it's pretty cool to see so <laughs> um so let me switch back real quick and see if if this works am i back you're back Okay. Sometimes I Johnny Cash painting in the background. I'm madly in love with it, and I'm not taking. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I actually uh, that's that's it? one that like same thing. Like I'm actually um, like I said, not, like I'm gonna be filming myself painting. This is one that I want to finish really soon because it's been it's. I started like a couple years ago, but I just got so busy that it just it's been just sitting there, and it drives me crazy because I want to finish it. Um, and uh, so that's one I'm gonna be working on really soon, and. Uh, I'll be like sharing videos of it and stuff. So I love Johnny Cash. Uh, so one of my all time favorites. I have a wood burning of him uh, that I got from. Uh, I traded art with a buddy of mine that's a chainsaw carver and he did a wood burning of it, like the middle finger one. Uh, oh, yeah. All time favorites. I can't share it online because like I've got little kids that like follow me. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, like I want to share it so bad. He's an amazing artist, but it's like one of my most treasured. Pe- I like I have odd art from all over the place just because of connecting with different artists. Is my favorite thing to do is yeah. collect art from. Uh, you have yeah. a bobblehead of yourself. Uh and my newest one is a Funko <laughs> Pop. I got a Funko <laughs> Pop the other day. That's so cool. I want a bobblehead. <laughs> uh, dude, I can connect so funny. with the I can connect um, with the artist on Etsy that made it for me. Oh, that's hilarious! Uh, a friend of mine is a musician, and uh, I remember a couple years ago, he had a bobblehead made of him, and it's so funny because it doesn't really look like him at all, but but it's really funny. Um, I was who doesn't so love worried. bobbleheads? I spent 120 bucks on this, and I was just like, that was my concern. I'm like, I've seen good pets go bad, you know what I mean? <laughs> And uh, this one came, and I could not have been more happy. It looks cool. Yeah. I turned around and bought 20 more of them and have been selling them. And, like, people are collecting them. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. It's branding, dude. It's all about branding. You got that's your, true. You got, got your hat. You got to do a little bottle. Well, like, well, like I you said, like, the just, like, um, you know, like, what, when, when they approached me and they said, Bar- Barbie the, the welder, I, I immediately I just assumed that they were giving all these different women 
character names, kind of like Rosie the River. That's what because that's what it made sense to me. And you were the first one they sent to me, and I'm like, well, who's the who's this next woman? Um, you know, Julia the carpenter or something. Like I didn't know like how they were gonna do it. You know, um, but yeah, it was it was like it was if it, it works perfect. Like your name with this whole campaign was actually like just gold. Do you know what I mean? Like it just looks cool on the poster. Like it does. it's it's awesome. It does. So it was cool. Well, yeah, I wanted to like say a superhero with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I just want to say thank you again so much for taking the time. I know you had a few different interviews today. Um, thank you so much for um, uh, chatting with me. This has been a fun chat. Really fun yeah. getting to know you a little bit and um, and also just to let you know too. Like I mean, I've I paint hundreds of people all the time and I never really get to meet them or you know this just it was even cool just seeing you with next to the poster like so that so it's really cool so i appreciate you taking the time um it's an i'm an i'm honored to be a part of the project and um really happy to have gotten to meet you meet you maybe hopefully in person one day um and uh if there's anything you would like to before we go to just to let people know where to find you where to follow promote whatever's coming up or anything feel free Oh, awesome. Awesome. I am so honored that you took your time to, to talk to me and the fact that you chose to be part of this project. Your your art is exquisite. It's so unique Thanks. and you, you definitely like I feel like you painted me into a rock star. I totally <laughs> I, I'm humbled and honored by the fact that you chose to take your time and go all in on your passion to make that your business and for the time that you put into that. So thank you very much. Oh no problem. That. Yeah, um, I appreciate it. My social media, you can find me at Barbie the Welder on, let's see, Instagram. I do how to weld art videos and some inspirational stuff on my YouTube channel, Barbie the Welder. Uh, Barbie the Welder on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and new to TikTok. I'm having a ball on TikTok. There's <laughs> more irreverent stuff on TikTok because TikTok is telling me that. Some of my shenanigans are not always appreciated on Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> but um, I, I'm having so much fun with TikTok. Um, coming up, I'm actually going to be welding a sculpture for Bogus the Kiner, close to our All Girls Garage. I'll be out in Phoenix April 1st or the 15th. Oh, so cool. Please stay tuned for that one. Um, so that's going to be a surprise. What that's going to be, and I'm also teaching classes while I'm out there. It is so rare anymore for me to be able to teach classes live. I normally do it all through YouTube. But Bogey is setting me up with... Um, classes so if you know anyone that is a woman that has ever wanted to weld art phoenix arizona you have to stay tuned to girl gang garage and oh that's awesome let you know through that what um what classes are being offered and when that's really cool awesome really cool so uh Thank you, everybody, uh, for listening, and uh, thank you all for your support. Thank you, Dominic, for your awesome drawing you did. And uh, thank you. we will all catch you all on the flippity flip flop side. Awesome. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. You want answers? the truth.